What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Blue Nation podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and today we are going to be uh, having our, what episode is this? Three? Four? I think it's four. Uh, episode four of our Big Blue Nation podcast here, and we are going to go ahead and start up with the games this week, recap them, all that good stuff. Obviously, we went 1-1 one and one this week, losing 76-63 to against Tennessee on the road, number 16th ranked at the time, and beating number 25 Alabama at home, 90-81. Uh, to 81. Sorry if I sound a little bit sick. I got a little bit of a little messed up, uh, little messed up uh, throat right now, but it is what it is. So as we, as you guys can uh, as you guys saw most likely over the weekend losing to ten or over the week losing to Tennessee unfortunately um, they hit us in the mouth um, go ahead and jump into the stats here but they hit us in the mouth man there's not a whole lot we can do um, I mean it is what it is take a look at the box score. We played really competitively in that game, but I mean, ever since seven minutes in and on, they just took they just took the lead and just went from there. We made it back within six, uh, about seven, eight points, but I mean, it was just not good, man. We shot thirty four percent from the field. They shot forty four percent from the field. They shot almost fifty percent from three. We shot thirty one percent from three. They shot better free throw percentage. I mean, just those numbers alone should be able to tell you that you know, hey. It is what it is. So, one thing I do want to start saying though is we will be starting to add. This is just completely on off topic, but uh, we will be starting to add. Um, what's gonna call it? Kentucky baseball into the mix as well. Uh, the Kentucky baseball season started over this past weekend, and we'll recap those games as well. But anyways, I just want to tell you guys that. But we'll do that after we recap basketball. But uh, we shot. Yeah. Um, we shot 5 for 16 from the 3 in that game. Not great. They shot 8 for 17. So not super, super, super man, you know. But, I mean, they hit they hit 3 more than us and only shot 1 more than us. So, it was just a very disappointing game. We led that game early 10-5. Uh, we were in control. And then they just started hitting us in the mouth. I mean, we couldn't score. I mean, they did a great job on defense. That was the real big difference. Uh, Kennedy Chandler had 17. Viscovi had 18. They had two 14-pointers off the bench. They had Ziegler and Fulkerson. Um, Kennedy Chandler, three for five from three. Viscovi, two for four. Two for four for Ziegler, for Ziegler whatever. Um, so they had a really solid game shooting the basketball. They We out-rebounded them 40-32. to 32. Um, They had more assists, 17-11. to 11. Steals, they had three more than us. Blocks, they had seven more blocks than us. Um, fouls pretty even, but some of the fouls were a little ridiculous. But again, I'm not going to blame the refs. We got punched in the mouth. Um, I mean, this is the first time that we've really legitimately been outplayed since the Notre Dame game, in my opinion. Um, Notre Dame, we got outplayed. We played like crap in that game, and we got we got outplayed. We have not been outplayed by a team since that. LSU, we lost. We didn't have severe for 90% of the game. We didn't have Ty Ty for 90% of the Auburn game. We were punching Auburn in the mouth until he went down. Um, so I, 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 you know, I, I, I still this is a this is a fine loss for me. This is a big rivalry game that Tennessee is remains undefeated at home. Um, they remain undefeated at home. You know, you know, it is what it is. So. Uh, you know, I'll take that loss any day of the week over some other games that we have, but, uh, but yeah, uh, now going into our stat line, enough about Tennessee, uh, most minutes was Wheeler and Grady with 36 and 37, Kellen Grady only had six points, shot two for nine from the field, two for six from three, four for 10 from the field for Wheeler, only eight points, you gotta, I mean, four points for Ty Ty before he went down and only 13 minutes played. Uh, 22 minutes for Brooks, 8 points. Sheboy, 13 points, and 15 rebounds in 30 minutes. Uh, shot only 33% from the, or shot, uh, shot 33% from the field, which is way below what he normally shoots. 
Mintz had 31 minutes off the bench with 11 points. Toppin, another solid game for him. Uh, Double-digit scoring with 11 points in 20 minutes. Shot 5 for 9 from the field and with 6 rebounds. Almost a double-double or getting up there for a double-double for him. Um, but, I mean, overall, I mean, it is what it is. Um, can't get mad about it. You just got to move on from it. It is what it is. I was fully expecting this to happen. I wasn't expecting it to happen by 13 points. And they, I mean, but that, again, they just hit us in the mouth badly, man. Uh, there's not really much we can do. They hit us in the mouth. Uh, you know, good for them. Uh, we'll move on. And we did move on. We bounced back against uh, against Alabama. That was an insane game. Uh, they led by as much as uh, 12 with about four minutes left to go in the first half. They led by about 12. Yeah, and we went on a 13-0 run. We went on a 13-0 run to end the half. And then at the end of the half, we were up 47 to 40, 46. And Kellen Grady shot lights out in that game. Not to mention we also didn't have Ty Ty or Savir in this game. So our backcourt did not play. So we had Toppin and, and Mintz start in replacing of them. Um, so Grady moved, got moved to a guard. Um, and he shot 7 for 9 from 3, 9 for 16 from the field, racked up a whopping 25 points. Keon Brooks had 18 in that game, shot 1 for 1 from 3, 7 for 12 from uh, the field. Toppin was 1 for 2 from 3, 13 points, 5 for 9 from the field, and, and he played all 40 minutes, which I did not notice. Holy crap, he played... He played 40, 39, 39, 37, 36. Our starters played a majority of that game. With the most minutes coming off the bench was Damian Collins with played four minutes to give Oscar Sheboy a break. Um, two minutes for Bryce Hopkins. One minute for Lance Ware, which I don't really like. I don't understand that from Cal. Lance Ware has been playing really well lately. and He just doesn't play him. Uh, there was only... Damian Collins had six points in four minutes off the bench. He got to the line twice and hit a layup as well. So he his production's been pretty well off the bench. Um, we shot 53% from the field, 64% from three. They shot like 9 for 12 to start the game. They had Ellis, who shot 7 for 11 from three, 5 for 12 from, for Shackelford. Um, and they were just, I mean, they were just banging them, but ended up finishing the game at 35%. So... Overall, um, again, Ellis had 28, Shackelford with 18, uh, Gurley with 12, uh, yeah, Toppin with 13, Shibwe with 21 rebounds and 14 boards, 18 points, 8 boards, boards for Keon Brooks, uh, 25 points for Kellen Grady, only 7 points for Mintz, uh, was 0 for 2 from 3, but did have, uh, went to go to the line a couple times, and he played pretty decent. No one with more than four assists. Everyone pretty much almost had about two or three assists in that game, which is solid. I like to see it. Um, they had more assists than us in, as a whole. They had 15. We had 13. Steals, we had more and more than them. We out-rebounded them by six. Uh, no, seven. Uh, fouls, we only committed seven fouls during that game. Only seven, which is pretty insane. Uh, the refs were pretty bad for both teams. I honestly thought they were worse for us. But it, so it's a really surprise. It really surprises me that we had almost, we had like less than half of their fouls. But it is what it is. Um, we we won the game regardless. Uh, they were number twenty five at the time. They moved up this week. Uh, went from I can't remember. We'll look at that in a minute. But we won ninety to eighty one, putting up ninety points on a ranked Alabama Crimson Tide team. Without our starting backcourt, is pretty impressive in my book. Um, so, yeah, that is what it is. but I will take it every day of the week. Good bounce back win for the boys and giving us some confidence going into this upcoming week when we do not have, we might not have our starting backcourt again on Wednesday when we take on the LSU Tigers trying to get a revenge win over them. And uh, yeah, if we can get a revenge win over them, that'd be great. Um, I think we should be able to. Um, they're not as good as Alabama is. 
<sighs> and um, yeah, um, hopefully we'll have Severe back, but I don't think we'll have Ty Ty back. I think Ty Ty will probably play against Arkansas, um, but I don't think it's worth it to play him against LSU when we're at home. I mean, we're we're undefeated at home. We're like 13, 14 and 0 at home, something like that. Um, so. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty solid overall at home. I think we actually might be like 16 and 0 at home, um, but yeah. So overall, very, very solid at home. We have not lost. I don't think. I mean, we had a couple scares, but undefeated at home. I believe we'll probably remain undefeated at home the rest of the season. Only have uh, Ole Miss and LSU left at home. On the road, we have Florida and Arkansas. So no easy games at on the road. Easy games at home, of course. Right? Why? You know why not? Um, this has to be fixed next year, man. I'm sick of having these stupid easy games at home, but then having stupid stupid hard games on the road. Kansas on the road. Auburn on the road. Alabama on the road. We have Alabama at home, too. Um, Tennessee, we have both. Florida, we have both every year. Um, Arkansas on the road. Texas A&M, when they were super hot. You know, they were 15-2 and, uh, and undefeated at home on, uh, when, we when we faced them at home. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I'd like to have some more home games that are good games. I mean, if you look at Kansas, all their good home, good games are at home. Auburn, all our good, all their good games are at home. Ours, nah, Chief. So I just, for personally, I'd like to see better games at home in Rupp. Plus, I would just, I think it would be more fair to get a couple home games in our favor um, next season. But we'll see. If it, you know, if it repeats itself, we should be facing Auburn next year at home, um, which is going to be sold out for sure. But I mean, our this Alabama game when they were number twenty-five, they're the second at the at the for in terms of ranking, this was the second hardest game at home this year. This in Tennessee, Tennessee was the, was ranked number twenty-two when we faced them at Rupp. That's the highest ranked team that we faced that we faced at home this year, twenty-two. Out of everyone in the SEC, right? Arkansas, right? I mean, it's all these all these teams. You know, obviously some of the teams towards the end of the season, right? Like Alabama and, and LSU have had disappointing seasons, but I mean, we need to we need to face some teams at home that are better, non conference as well. I mean, we had a cake non conference schedule um, to start off the year. I mean, it was cake, and all the hard ones. Guess what? On the road, <laughs> like you know. So it is what it is, man. But I'm happy with the 22 and five schedule that we had, so uh, it is what it is. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and, and preview our games this week. Uh, uh, we have LSU at home this week at 9 p.m. on Wednesday, and then Arkansas at 2 p.m. at 2 p.m. on CBS uh, on the road on Saturday. So that'll be interesting. Uh, ESPN gives us an 80.6% chance to win this game against LSU, which I don't really understand too much. They've really dropped off ever since uh, we played them the first time. Uh, we averaged seven points more than them. Four po uh, their points against, their, theirs is better than ours, actually. They shoot 4% less than us. We out-rebound them, out of system. They out-block us by 0.2, uh, out-steal us by a good amount, and they're on a losing streak um, right now after losing their game against South Carolina, who we beat. They've also lost against Vandy, and they've just not been playing great. Uh, our last five, beating Bama, losing Tennessee, beating Florida, beating South Carolina, beating Bama. So. Overall, their point leaders right now, Tari Eason, 16.9. Shibway with 16.4. Uh, obviously, Shibway is the leading rebounder. Assist man, 7.1 for Wheeler if he plays. Hopefully, he will. So, I think we should win that game. I'm not really too su super worried about it. Uh, hopefully, that we have some some good practices this week, strengthen our guys up, get healthier, and come back stronger against LSU and put up an absolute blowout statement win heading into our next game against Arkansas. Uh, they give us a 60.7% chance to win, uh, meaning that Arkansas gets a 39.3. Uh, they have Note, who has is averaging 18.5 a game. Uh, obviously, she weighs the leading rebounder. However, they do have Williams, who's averaging almost 10, which is still a good amount. Note is averaging 3.4 assists. Severe again, 7.1. Um, they just beat Tennessee this weekend, uh, 58 to 48. Obviously, beating Auburn in overtime 
uh, 80 to 76, uh, which is a big which is a big win. Uh, they did lose to Alabama recently on the road. We just recently beat Alabama on the road. Uh, they lost by one point. So they are definitely human, um, but they are definitely a solid team. A very solid team this year. 21 and six, 10 and four in conference play. If we lost this game, they would actually jump us in the conference rankings, I believe. So, uh, why don't we go ahead here and we can take a look at the standings as well, the SEC basketball standings here. Uh, so, as you guys can, uh, I can't really see it, but uh, we are number two behind Auburn. Uh, they are 12 and two in the conference play. We are 11 and three. Arkansas 10 and four. Tennessee 10 and four, and then the rest are all seven and seven or worse. Um, so, yeah, um, we just, we you know, we win this game. Right, Arkansas is only one loss less than us this year. Uh, obviously, we have some better wins, uh, better losses, blah blah blah, but. If they beat us on Saturday, they jump us in the SEC standings, which will most likely will mean that we don't get a bye unless Arkansas loses. And in terms of Arkansas, their upcoming games, they have Florida on the road uh, this week, us at home, LSU at home, and Tennessee on the road. So they've got some tough games ahead of them as well um, in their, uh, down the stretch. But, I mean, they, ha I mean, they you know, we don't want them to win this game. Um, it is what it is, though. But, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Again, po you know, my, uh, my point of the fact that oh, we don't have a good non-conference schedule at home, Robert Morris, Mount St. Mary, Ohio, Albany, North Florida, Central Michigan, Southern, North Carolina, West, Western Kentucky, Missouri, High Point, Georgia, and then we move into conference play. Horrible teams. Horrible teams at home. But, you know, wh whatever. It is what it is. The closest together we've had losses is one, two, three, four games. So, statistically, it would be, you know, assuming we're healthy, I don't see us losing Arkansas. I, I mean, I, I definitely could see us, but I don't, I, I'm... Optimistic. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into Kentucky baseball. Um, the team is three and zero, starting off the season at Jacksonville State, uh, winning ten eight, six to two, and fifteen to one in our opening series. We take on Southeastern Missouri State. Um, oh boy, we have. I guess one of the games got rescheduled. Now we have a game on Wednesday, which I actually might not be able to attend. Um, you know, I could probably attend it. Actually, Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. Yeah, I could probably attend the Wednesday game, um, but there is a UK basketball game on. They got a busy schedule this week. Southeast of Missouri State on Tuesday, Bellarmine on Wednesday, Western Michigan uh, in a three-game series, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So... Uh, hopefully we should come out on top. Or no, Southeast of Missouri got canceled. Oh no, darn it! Well, that just messes everything up for me. Awesome. I don't know why that's like that, but starting off great. Whatever. Uh, we played Bellarmine on February Wednesday. Okay. Anyways, just realized that now. Didn't see that. It is what it is. Uh, kind of disappointing. I wanted to go to the game tomorrow, but it is what it is. Uh, we play Bellarmine on Wednesday to start off our home games at Kentucky Proud Park. And, uh, yeah. And then Western Michigan, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, all at one, uh, 4 p.m., 1 p.m., 1 p.m. So, yeah, um, that is that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know if we can take a look at statistics right now. Batting average, uh, obviously the big one, Araja New batting 500. Uh, Daniel Harris, the fourth, averaging uh, five, uh, 455. Chase Estep, averaging 444. Jacob Pl uh, Plastiak, averaging 429. Ryan Ritter, th 313. 
uh, Hunter Jump, 286. Uh, John Thrasher, uh, John Thrasher, uh, 200, and Adam Fogel, 167. Um, and now for the guys that haven't necessarily um, hit those minimum requirements um, and aren't consistent starters, um, Ruben Church averaging uh, perfect one batting a thousand, uh, Kirk Leibhart, 667, Alonzo Rubalcaba. Uh, 333, Nolan McCart McCarthy, who had a grand slam la uh, yesterday, uh, 200, and the rest all zero. So it doesn't matter. But, uh, and now if we take a look at pitching, take a look at pitching right now, ERAs. Uh, we got some good ones in here, but uh, Austin Strickland, zero. In terms of wins, losses, uh, Sean Harney, uh, 1 0, zero ERA, uh, zero whip. In 2.1 innings pitched. Longest start was Tyler Bosma. Pitched five innings, a 1.80 RA, which I will take every day, uh, and got the win there as well. Cole Stupp has an ERA right now of 13.5, uh, which isn't great in four innings pitched. He, I believe, oh, he. Uh, he, I believe, um, was in our, our starter in the first game. Now, in terms of player, why has Ryan Hagenow not played? Is he? He's our best pitcher. Interesting. I don't know why he has not started yet. He's. I'm going to guess he's going to start uh, maybe one of the games against Western Michigan. They have a solid team. <coughs> Excuse me. They have a solid team, uh, but yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, some good hitters right now. Uh, our lowest being, uh, I mean, you know, but uh, right now our best hitter is a Raja New grad student, uh, Daniel Harris, the transfer. Chase Eastep played on the team last year. Jacob Plastiak didn't get any starts. Ryan Ritter, who I actually had statistics class with, kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, so uh, overall, again, disappointing that the team will not be playing. I don't know why it got canceled against Southeastern Missouri State, but uh, it is what it is. We play Bellarmine at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, which I guess I can go to. Um, I don't have how many class do I have that day. I have a 10 a.m. class. I think I should be fine, but we can go to that game, I believe. Um, but I'll probably have to leave early to go to the uh, game. Actually, I might not have to leave early because the gates open at 7.30, uh, on Wednesday, so it might be a little bit close, but going from one to the other, it might actually match up. So, uh, yeah, Western Michigan, uh, then this weekend, uh, 4 p.m., 1 p.m., 1 p.m., so tune into those. Uh, I mean, you don't have to. Again, I don't I don't understand that not everyone likes baseball, but I do a lot. Uh, disappointed that we don't have a game tomorrow. It kind of sucks. Um, I don't really have anything to do tomorrow, but it is what it is. So, well, we'll go ahead and just kind of do what we got to do. Hopefully we can stay undefeated up until we start a conference play March 18th, about a month from now, uh, against Arkansas, which is one of the best teams in the nation. Uh, yeah, moving back to basketball, we're gonna go ahead and bring up the AP poll here for basketball, and they dropped the ball this week. Uh, Gonzaga number one, fair. Arizona number two, fair. Auburn number three. Auburn should not be number three after losing to two unranked teams on the road in consecutive weeks should not be happening. I'm not going to get into it. I'm irritated with it, but it is what it is. Everyone's irritated with it except Auburn fans. So they go from one to two after losing to an unranked team uh, when they were number one, two to three when they were un losing to an unranked team as well. So it's what it is. Purdue jumps up from five to four. Kansas jumps us. Uh, Kansas jumps us from six to uh, uh, from six to five. We go down to number six, which is a fair ranking, However, I don't like that Kansas is ahead of us. But other than that, I mean, it is what it is. Duke 7, Nova 8, Texas Tech 9, Baylor 10, Providence 11, UCLA 12, uh, Wisconsin 13, Houston 14, Illinois 15, USC 16, Tennessee drops from 16 to 17, Arkansas 18, Murray State 19, Texas 20, UConn 21, Ohio State 22, St. Mary's back into the top 25 at 23, 
Alabama at number 24, and Iowa 25. Others receiving votes, Michigan State, Rutgers, Wyoming, Boise State, Davidson, San Diego State, South Dakota, South Dakota State, LSU, Marquette, uh, Wake Forest, Colorado State, Belmont, Notre Dame, SMU, Xavier, North Texas, Creighton, Vermont, and Wagner. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Gonzaga was a unanimous number one. Uh, Arizona and Auburn not receiving any first place votes. So, uh, now if we go ahead and take a look at the college baseball poll, uh, go and take a look at the college baseball rankings. That came out today as well. Texas at number one, Arkansas at number two at two and one, Ole Miss at three, Oklahoma State at two. Vanderbilt dropped from number three after going one and two over the weekend. Uh, Stan uh, Stanford at uh, number six at two and one. Uh, Mississippi State dropped from four to seven after also going two and one over the weekend. LSU, NC State, Florida State, Arizona, Long Beach State, Notre Dame, Oregon State, Florida, Georgia, TCU, Tennessee, Georgia Tech, Texas Tech, who went one and two. Uh, Liberty goes into the rankings. Maryland into the rankings. Duke, uh, Miami, uh, that's Miami, like Florida, Miami, and Eastern Carolina. Went 0-3 over the weekend and dropped from 12 to 25. We'll have every chance in the world to get into the top 25 over the season, but I doubt we do. So, uh, yeah. As for Kentucky football, this morning actually came out with the fact that Liam Cohen, unfortunately, um, Kentucky football, right, offensive coordinator Liam Cohen will be taking the offensive coordinator job at the Los Angeles Rams. Perfectly understandable, perfectly happy for him. However, it really, really sucks. Um, you know, he did a great job this season. We're going to have to bring someone in good. Recruits didn't like it. Um, talking, uh, People said they've talked to recruits about it and said, you know, BBN for life, but still, like, I wish I knew that before I committed. Um, but it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, he will be heading back to the Rams. I'm hoping we can get somebody from the NFL to come down here, maybe uh, a NFL QB coach, NFL wide receiver coach, NFL something, right, hopefully. We have a lot of ties with the NFL Sending guys there, bringing guys back from the NFL. Our offensive line coach was the assistant offensive line coach for the 49ers, just got hired. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Stoops doesn't call his own, Stoops doesn't call his own plays, uh, offense or defense. Um, it's just not how he coaches the team. So we'll see how that all works out. It is what it is. Congrats to Coach Liam Cohen for going back to the Rams. I hope you win 18 Super Bowls there. Um, you know he's always going to be Kentucky for life. But uh, you know, he did a great job here, and I'm hoping that we can bring some, someone in that is going to be just as good, if not better, uh, because we really need it because we are going to lose recruits and, we have, and lose this momentum that we had going if we lose too many of these good coaches. So, But again, Mark Stoops is really good at bringing in these good coaches, um, so we're going to go ahead and just wait out, wait, out, wait out on that. Spring ball does start in two weeks, though. Um, their spring game is in uh, – I don't know when their spring game is, but actually let's go ahead and look that up uh, while I'm talking about it. Because um, I actually might attend the spring game if possible. Uh, spring game. Let's see. Normally they do a blue-white scrimmage in the spring uh, at Kroger Field, uh, which I would definitely be attending. But uh, normally that's going to happen in like April like late April, usually. And then they take a break, and then they go back to summer ball, which is going to be fun. Obviously, me being here over the summer will help. Uh, I can go to all the pra I can go to so like the opening open practices and stuff like that, see how teams do it. But anyways, you know, that's not going to be is what it is. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, um, again, Liam Cohen, unfortunately, leaves, but it is what it is. Um, happy for him. Just kind of sucks for us. Um, our offense was starting to get going, and we need someone now to call the place. So, um, other than that, uh, nothing else really happened. The All-Star weekend for the NBA, um, nothing too crazy. Uh, college sports-wise, there's really nothing going on. No college football at the moment. Uh, college basketball regular season is starting to die down. College baseball is starting up. But uh, other than that, I mean, there's nothing really to talk about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Big Blue Nation podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and I will see you guys next Monday.